So today we are going to be creating this animation. It's going to be a very fun tutorial. It's going to be a very short tutorial as well because it's not that hard actually. So I've already brought in the Magnum that we created a couple of episodes ago. Uh, I also have the inner part for this. And if you remember the inner part, let me go into EV mode. The inner part is this ice cream type texture. Now, what we want to do is create a Boolean for this Magnum in order to be broken into two parts. So I will select all of this. I will place it into its own collection, which is going to be Magnum 1. I will then click on Shift A, Mesh, and let's bring in an Icosphere. Now for this Icosphere, we can bring it all the way over there. And in order to make it look a little bit better when we use the Boolean, we can add some more to this. So I will first add a subdivision surface modifier, and I will go to the modifiers, add a displace modifier, if you click on new, then you will get this little icon right here. If you click on it, it will automatically be redirected to the texture tab. Now I will click on type and it will be clouds. And now we can play around with the cloud settings, with the scale, for example. Uh, this will determine the way that our chocolate will be broken into different parts. This is just an easy way to get some more detail in there. Now I will go back into the modifier tab and we can play around with the strength and maybe see something that we like. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it subtle like this. Shade this smooth. Then I will go into the chocolate, go back to the modifiers and already add a Boolean modifier right here. And we are going to set it to difference, take the picker tool, select our icosphere. And now the icosphere will basically break apart this chocolate. So if you turn it off in the viewport, you can already see what this is going to look like. Now we're not going to apply it yet. We are going to select our ice cream from over there, add another Boolean and select this object. Very good. And if we now turn this off, we get our first part of the ice cream. It's already starting to look pretty cool. The way to go about this is we want two parts instead of only one. So what we need to do is select all of this, then I will duplicate it, leave it in the same place, click. I will place it into its own collection by pressing M, new collection. This will be Magnum 2 or Magnum Top, give it whatever name you would like. Uh, I will turn this off for now so we can only see the first one that we created and I will go into the subdivision and the boolean and apply all of those in order. Now do the same for this one. There you go. Then I will turn these off, turn the other one on, go back, click on this mesh first and instead of using difference we are going to be using intersect and that will give us the other area. Now I will once again apply all of this now, once again, for this one, set it to intersect and then we will get the opposite area. And I will click on control A, control A to apply all of this. And now we have this part over here and we have the other part on the bottom. Basically, what we can do now is make sure that these are broken up. So what I'm going to do is simply place our 3D cursor right there. Let's place an empty G and Y, make sure that it's somewhat in the middle. Select the inner part, the outer part, the empty last, control P, object keep transform, and now everything should follow this empty. And now I will add another one, cursor to select it, image, plane axis. Let's bring this upwards somewhere in the middle. Let's select all of these objects, select the empty last, control P, object keep transform, and now it should follow along with the empty. But I see we have an extra stick right there. Uh, we don't need that at all. So that's the very first part of this tutorial. Now we are going to do the animation for this and then afterwards we are going to bring in a particle system. So I'm going to click on one and I will select both of these empties and press I and now both of these will have a keyframe. Then I will go over to frame let's say 72 maybe 48 is fine I don't know we'll see later on. Let's select this empty let's rotate it let's make sure that we can see the inside a bit for this one and uh, rotate it like that. So click on I, then I will select this one and perhaps it is going the other side. Press I, let's see what that would look like. Up. All right, and now it's breaking apart. We can go into the graph editor by pressing control tab while in the timeline, it will automatically bring you to the graph editor. Let's open this up. Let's have a look at all of these. And I'm going to click on normalize because I like to see all of these lines between minus one and one instead of having them be all over the place like this. Uh, so I'm going to select this empty as well. And now we have everything selected, so it seems. And then I will select these lines, S and Y, bring it all down. 
Now this line is going down very fast, this one is going up very fast, which means that it's going to break apart a bit faster like this. I'm going to press S and X and bring it even closer to the beginning. And I feel like the bottom one is not cooperating enough. So let's have a look at this. S and, oh, let's select this. S and X, let's bring it even closer. Pop, pop. Yeah, very cool, pop. Uh, if we want it to be even faster, I'm going to select all of these left handles for the last keyframe as well and bring it to the left. Pop. Now, instead of it breaking straight away, let's maybe place it somewhere over here to frame 10. Pop. So now we have some time to move into this with the camera and then the animation happens instead of it happening too quick for us to even see what's going on like this. All right, so that's the animation, very simple stuff. Uh, now we need to add a particle simulation. So what I'm going to do, Shift A, Mesh, add an icosphere. I will bring this right over here and give it a chocolate texture by selecting the chocolate last, holding Shift, go to the Material Properties tab, open this up, copy material to select it, and now we have an icosphere with chocolate. I'm going to bring this into its own collection by pressing M, Choco Bits. Then I will go into Edit Mode, click on O for Proportional Editing, Select the vertex and move this around to make it look like chocolate bits. Something like this. Then we'll add another one. Very cool. Let's make sure they are a bit randomized. Like this. And uh, perhaps from another side. Another angle. The more you have, the better it will look. I will give them all a subdivision of one or two. Depending on the way it looks. Shade it smooth, shade it smooth. And there you have it. So now we have those Choco bits in their own collection. And now we need to make sure that we have a particle simulation for this chocolate. So we'll select the outside area of this. And if I go into edit mode, you can actually see that we have some area selected right here. And this is the part that was selected when we destroyed the mesh with the Boolean. Now, if you are not seeing this, you can go into dash and select them all very carefully by holding C and selecting all of this, like so. It doesn't really matter if you go outside it a little bit like this. You can always remove it holding control. For example, I'm going to click on three. Now go into the object data properties tab right over here. Vertex groups plus assign control I remove. So now we should have this area as a vertex group. So let's click on dash once again. Let's go into the particle system. Let's add a new particle. It's going to be an emitter type. And from frame 10 onwards, from 10, frame 10, it is going to explode, I believe. So frame 10, that's when we should have the animation start. So frame start, 10, end at 11, because we only want one small burst. It shouldn't be continuous particles coming out of this. So let's go over to render. Let's select collection. Let's select the collection choco bits. And then I will increase the scale randomness. And let's have a quick look at this for now. Ah, there you go. We have our particle system. Very cool. I think they are a bit too big. So I'm going to scale this down. Uh, now they all do look the same. So I don't think they are getting the right one. So I will select pick random. And that will select some random choco bits from our collection. Yeah, so it's falling down. We don't want that. And an easy solution for this would be to go down here. Field weights, gravity all the way down. And now it is just going from our, well, entire mesh in this case, because we haven't assigned it to our vertex group. So let's go to vertex groups, and for the density, select our group. Pow. So now it's moving in all of these directions. I can see a couple of issues. The lifetime is too short, so let's increase this all the way to whatever you like, as long as it's longer than your timeline. No need to do the lifetime randomization. We are not making particles or fire, or embers, stuff like that. Now I'm going to open up the velocity. One thing I'm annoyed by is that it's only coming from this side and it's not going in all directions. So the easy way to fix that would be to set the tangent to a negative value. So let's place this to a negative value. Let's see what it does. All right, let's set the normal to zero. It's kind of going through each other, I don't like that. So we're going to set the tangent phase to minus one. And now it's all moving outwards. Very cool, but it's not very randomized. We can probably do something with that. Object velocity, randomize. 
that's starting to look pretty cool. And then we are going into the rotation and turn up the randomization face and randomize face. I just use some random values for these always. And uh, well, it kind of looks cool now. Uh, we have our choco bits coming out. Q. Very good. But it can be faster, so the tangent can be brought down even more, like minus 2.5. Like this. Maybe even faster. Pa -pa. All right. Let's play around with the randomization. There you go. Now, I don't want it to be this fast so late in this animation. It should only be fast in the beginning, like puff, breaking out. And from here onwards, it should be a whole lot slower. So how can we do this? Simply go over to, where is it? Physics, integration, and there you will see time step. So on frame, let's say 13, I'm going to press I. And then on frame, let's say 16, I'm going to bring this all the way down to 0 0.01. Press I. Now let's see what happens. Boom. And then it is going in slow motion. Pow. That looks very cool. I like it when it looks like that. Let's give it a background. So let's add a plane. G and Y. Let's scale this upwards. Let's go into the shader editor. New. Let's make this a brownish type color that fits with the scene. I will go into cycles, turn on motion blur by the way. Render mode, that's pretty dark. Let's add a HDRI. I'm going to add sunset G JHB central. If you still don't know what this add-on is, it's Lumio and it's basically a better version of Blender's lighting system. So I'm going to bring in a light, point light, and I will bring it towards this plane. And then I will go into IES and give this an IES texture. I'm just going to select the first one and increase the strength. Uh, it looks like this. Let's click on one. Go into the output. Let's flip this around. 1080 by 9020. Go into the camera. Let's set it to 80 millimeter. Let's go to viewport display. Passepartout. Let's make sure that we get this entire thing in the screen. And now we have some cool type of gradient for the background as well. We can play around with the color and stuff like that. I'm going to leave that up to you. Maybe a dark brown looks pretty premium as well. Now all you need to do is add some light, something like this. Maybe rotate it around here, like so. And then we have a pretty cool looking light. I'm going to the particle system once again. I will turn down the scale and have a lot of, bit of bits and pieces, maybe 5,000. Would that look cool? I don't know. Have a look see. It's pretty cool, but I think we can improve one more thing. So let's go over to the icospheres for our choco bits. Let's duplicate this and let's scale it up. And now we also get some larger bits and pieces from here instead of only these small parts. So let's play around with this until we get to the desired result. Pow. Yeah, very cool. So now we have our breaking magnum animation. I think this is awesome. All right, so that's pretty much it for this breaking animation. You can go into the particles, go to cache and click on bake. I'm going to place a small camera animation on this simply so it fits better with the previous scene because we zoomed out. Let me show you real quick. So we have this chocolate simulation and it is zooming in in the end. So it's kind of... And I want to emulate that at the start of this render. I'm basically going to have the camera come in in the same fashion. So I hope you have a pretty cool looking render. If you would like to check out the King of Light bundle pack, it would help support me as a creator. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to be making this animation. Choco, choco,